schedules to be here and to learn more about intermittent fasting. So he here, who here wants to learn uh, easy ways to lose weight? And you don't need to eat anything differently. It's going to be super easy. And and you don't you don't it's it's like crazy simple. I've been doing it now for the past since August. I started doing it, and yeah, I, I started doing it. I lost like 20 pounds. And today, what we're going to do? We're going to talk about what are the steps necessary to do intermittent fasting. And the benefits of doing intermittent fasting is once you do it, you will reverse disease. So let's get started. So what is intermittent fasting? Okay, so fasting uh, is the voluntary withholding of food. So you say, okay, I'm not going to eat from this time to this time. And a lot of people, when you say the word fasting, they get scared. It's, oh, it's, uh, I'm going to be uh, starving to death. I'm going to be in, um, what's the word I'm looking for? So I'm going to be, I'm going to deprive my body of food. But that's the, the starvation and fasting is completely different. People that are starving, there is no food. Come on in. Oh, you made it. Okay. Yeah. Hi, guys. Sure. You can see, yeah. Right? So there's there's two different, the st starvation and fasting is different. And fasting has been done for million, or for thousands of years. Most most Christians do it during the month of Lent, right? They fast in the, for religious reasons. Muslims do it during the month of Ramadan. They fast for 30 days. And the Muslim way is not the ideal way because they don't even drink water. That, that That's not recommended. And Buddhism, in the Buddhist culture, they do it as well. Buddhists usually only eat in the evening, at night time. So that's the only meal they have. So they fast all day. And there's total benefits of this. And the science is starting to catch up with the benefits of fasting. Next, uh, um, intermittent fasting, IMF, has become more popular in recent years. Now you hear it all the time on the, on the radio. You hear it on TV. You hear it on the, the Dr. Oz show. Yesterday I was driving and I listened to CBC radio and they were talking about intermittent intermittent fasting. Somebody called, a cardiologist called, and he was asking a question. He said, oh yeah, the benefits of intermittent fasting. Everybody's talking about it. But the problem is there's a lot of confusion about what it is and how to do it. And people are scared to start something they don't know anything about. And that's what we're going to go over today. We're going to give you, I think, I'm going to give you, I'm going to do it in an hour, maybe an hour, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. But this is by no means all that you, you need to know. This is going to be an introduction and hopefully I'm going to excite you in a way so you're going to go home and you're going to do some research and you're going to do, and you could ask me and I could give you links of websites and videos that you can watch to improve your knowledge of this because this is something you need to learn. This has been something that everybody has done for thousands of years and since the 70s that's when it all stopped, stopped happening. Like I could ask you guys, you remember in the back home in Germany, you guys are from the islands, right? In the, in the islands, what kind of oil do they use to cook? In the 70s and 80s, what did the doctors say here that coconut oil is? Bad for you. Bad for you, right? But now it's coming back and it's good for you, right? Mm -hmm. So don't really always listen to, to, to the media because the media is always going to give you some sort of lie and they're going to exaggerate things and that's not the truth. Truth is what the numbers are showing with the science and, and the research and also um, looking at family history. Your family history, people were never overweight, people never had diabetes, people never had high blood pressure, but now since the 70s and 80s, it's crazy. Everybody has it. Like 50%, come on in. Yeah. Uh, the door, can you move over one seat? So, so it's okay. Okay. Hi. 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 Nice to see you. Sorry. So, no problem. That's okay. So, and fasting has been used for centuries. Do you, can we talk about this? So, this is when food was scarce, people didn't eat. There wasn't no 7 Eleven, no grocery store. When there was no food, you didn't eat. And your body is very intelligent. Your body knows exactly what to do. There's ways that it stores energy, and, and there, those, those energy, when it stores it, it's going to use it. Okay? So, next. Let's, let's start about six small meals a day. Who, who has done this in the past? I'm I know. doing that. Okay, six perfect. Six, six, six small meals a day. And they say this this theory, this is a theory. I'm going to show you how this is bad. You should not be... Oh, come on in. Let me just sit there. Yeah, okay. I'm going to... Oh, packed house. Wow. Good job. And there's two more seats on the other side too. Yeah. So six small, six small meals a day. I'm going to show you that it's a bad thing to do. Yeah, because it affects your hormones. Nobody that's done six small meals a day has ever been able to lose weight on the long term. And I'm going to tell you this, this I'm going to make this statement. Any diet you do, any diet you do, you're going to lose weight. 
Doesn't matter what you do, you're going to lose weight. But the, the question is, are you going to be able to maintain that lost weight for 5, 10, 15, 20 years? The goal of, of, of life is to stay in the same shape that you are. Like, I'm just, like, I don't know, like, I think 10 pounds heavier than I was in high school. And high school was a long time ago for me. Wow. 20, 20 plus years ago. Right? I'm only 10 pounds heavier. Can you look at yourself and say, okay, I'm only 10 pounds heavier than I was in high school? Okay, perfect. So that's good. So we have a few people here. Not many, but one. <laughs> so... Um, I was out of high school much longer than <laughs> so my weight will go. So theory keep metabolism high, so it keeps your metabolism high because your digestive system has to work. Avoid starvation mode, but research shows that this is not a good system to go on, right? And what does the research say? Same amount of calories to metabolize. So because if you fast, you you metabolize the same amount of calories, but you do it in less. You, you only do it on less feeding. The other way you do, like let's say six times a day, and I'm gonna show you some graphs that's gonna show the, the, the glucose and the insulin because it comes down to hormones. And uh, true starvation mode, and starvation doesn't start until 72 to 96 hours after you don't eat anything. That's when starvation starts. So like three to four days after you stop eating, that's when starvation starts. But many people are afraid to start fasting. You know why? Because they say, I'm going to starve to death. You, I'm, I'm, my body's going to eat my own muscles. I don't want to lose my own muscle, right? So you see, it's similar to this. If, if, you, if you had a house, right, and you, you have a fireplace, and you buy like lots of firewood, right? Um, when, it, when there is a fire, uh, when, you, when you want to get warm, would you take your couch and take the wood from your couch and burn it? No, you would never do that. Your body is the same way. It's never going to use muscles because it knows that muscles you need it to exercise, to run. Because we're, we're primitive individuals. So your muscles, you need it to run away from what? Same fire. Fire, <laughs> prey, or like a big uh, big uh, cyber, the what is it? So cyber tooth tiger. Cyber tooth tiger, yeah. <laughs> from a big, from a big cyber, cyber tooth or lion or, or, or dog or whatever the case is. So your muscles, you need them. So your body's not going to use that to give you energy with. It's going to use something that's very readily available. We all have a lot of it on our bodies. And what is that? Fat. Yeah. Fat, right. So, but the problem is most of you are not fat burners. Most of you are sugar burners, and sugar burners, you only have a limited amount of sugar stored in your body. And sugar, you know where it's stored? In your liver. liver. Okay? And it's uh, your body, you eat, I'm going to go over more detail of this, but you eat and your body takes that sugar, that the glucose we call it, it takes the glucose and it takes it into the liver and it converts it to glycerol. And glycerol is the storage form of glucose. And when you need energy, it's going to use that, it's going to give you the glycerol, and it's going to convert it, it's going to give you glucose, and then you're going to be able to survive, right? Then you're going to be okay. But when, when you don't have uh, enough uh, energy, and you don't have enough glycerol, then it's not going to burn your fat. I mean, it's not going to burn your muscles, it's going to start burning your fat. And that's why, um, when you do intermittent fasting, your body's just going to shrink. Like, like I, 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 I used to have a little bit here, but now that's gone. Why? Because my body's using that, my... Uh, the system that it's, it was designed to do to burn the, the, the fat for energy. Um, next, five most common types of fasting. So now we're going to go over the different types of fasting. Uh, you've probably heard this alternate day fasting. So you fast one day and you don't fast the other day. Here's another one. I'm going to go in detail on each one of them. Okay, so the warrior diet. This one is more like the uh, Buddhist. They, they only eat once a day and at the end of the day, right? So they have a dinner and that's it. That's all they eat. And they eat but you see, one thing is, if you fast, you drink lots of fluids. You drink lots of fluids. Like, you, you got to drink, like, because you, you, initially you're going to start, because I know what's going through your mind. Well, well, I can't do it because every time I don't eat, my stomach go, starts going crazy and I got to put something in it for, for, the, for, for the stomach to stop doing it. First two, three days, that might happen. First week, if you've been a sugar burner for a long time, it might happen. But as soon as you pass that critical point, what's going to happen is your body slowly, as you fast, is going to start using um, your fat to give you energy. So that, you know what's the longest fast that's ever been done? I told you, that's what. No, huh? I've seen on the internet. Uh, 382 days. Yeah. 
That's the longest fast that somebody has done. And they lived it. They lived it, but they fast, but they only took supplements. That's all they took. But they did not take any food. They just drank water, probably tea and coffee and stuff like that. And um, what do you call them? supplements? And at the end of the fast, they did his blood work. Everything was good. And he was being medically supervised. He was a really, you could, you could Google it uh, and you could see the person. I don't know if there's a video of him, but he was like super obese. He was like over four or 500 pounds. And he was strong enough mentally to be able to do it. Because one of the keys to do it, like anything else in life, you have to be strong here. Because there's a lot of things that are gonna, they're gonna come in play and they're gonna prevent you from doing it. You go, um, you, you just, drive down the street, all these burger shops, all these McDonald's, Tim Horns, uh, Muffin, and you know, I'm going to tell you one thing, like today I'm hungry, you know why? Because who eat today? I told him, oh, I, I'm, I'm, I've been fasting like for 48 hours. He said, oh no, you can't fast that long. So he went and he got me a muffin, and I, and I, I had a sweet tooth, so I took it. But I, I had two eggs earlier, but my stomach started to brawl, so uh, he, sugar is the bad enemy. Right? So the warrior diet, the 16-8, that's the one I used to do, but now I'm, I'm incorporating 24-hour day fast, 48-hour fast, and, uh, and soon I'm going to experiment with uh, like a whole week. I want to go a whole week without eating food. It's going to be tough, but uh, I got to do it. It's been done, so I'm going to do it too. Right? So 16-8 fast. The next one is eat, stop, eat. So you eat one day, you don't eat another day, you eat one day, you don't eat another day. And the last one is five two. So you eat for five days with low calories, and then you don't you don't eat anything for two days. And when I say you don't eat anything, um, any solid food. But you could eat uh, bone broth. Like we talked about this. You could eat. Um, you could drink water. You could drink as uh, and and the water you could make it flavorful. So you add some lime or lemon or or some um, some citrusy fruit in there, and then that's going to give you some flavor. Coffee and tea you could do as well and uh, bulletproof, bulletproof coffee, and we'll talk about that in a bit. So what is alternate day fasting? It only every other day on fast days, either no food or very minimal amounts of food. Okay, so that's pretty simple. And um, um, so, and everybody's gonna be different. Some people might be able to do the 16, eight. Some people might be able to do, uh, I don't know, 24, like the, the, the warrior diet. The warrior fasting. Some people might be able to do the alternate day fasting, and don't feel bad if you can't, because your body's going to have to get used to doing it, right? So don't feel bad if you can't. It's it's going to take some training, and it's going to take some uh, fortitude and some strength on your part, and you need some support at home too. You don't want people mocking you for trying this. You don't want people to oh yeah you're going to starve to death now. You you, you already. You already have this problem, and now you're gonna have that problem, and now you, your muscles gonna melt, and you're gonna look so skinny, right? People tell me that, right? But that's okay. I, I just because I know what I'm doing is helping my body be healthier. Like I've never had so much energy. Honestly, I never had so much energy. Like I'm working like all the time. Like I'm, I, I, I put at least I don't know how much over 50, 60 hours of research to prepare this seminar, and. Um, and I just were working all, overnight, and I, I read two books, and I would recommend that every single one of you read these two books. And the name of the author, I'll, I'll just send you guys a, a link to it. It's Jason, um, Jason Fung, I believe his name is. He's a, actually, he's a Toronto um, nephrologist. He's a kidney doctor in Toronto. And the reason he started going into fasting, he said, oh, what the hell? We, we're giving all these medications to, to our patients, and they're not getting better. So one, what, he, what he does now, he has a clinic, he has a medical clinic that does intermittent fasting for the, uh, prescri prescribe intermittent fasting to their patients. Wow. And they monitor them and they make sure that, and most people that go in there have really bad high blood pressure, they have really bad, um, um, what's the other one? Insulin diabetes, type one, type two diabetes, and they go in there and if, it, if they follow the recommendations and they listen to the doctor and they do exactly what he tells them to do, guess what happened to the diabetes and high blood pressure and all those things? Mm -hmm. uh, reversed. Because you see, most of, most of you have probably heard, diabetes is not a reversible disease. It's a progressive. Like that's what, that's what our, our doctors are telling us or what the media is telling us is a progressively disease that gets worse over time. Well, how could this guy, be, this doctor, be able to reverse the diabetes of his patients? 
is he follows what has been working for thousands of years. And that's what chiropractors have been preaching for since 1895. That's when he was invented. We've been just saying, hey, listen, you don't need all this medicine. You don't need all these drugs. You just need to see what caused the problem, find the cause, and re re remove it, right? Every, every, uh, every problem that you have, every symptom that you have, has a cause, has something that caused it. So if you don't remove the cause and you just cover the symptoms, I had a patient this morning that came in, um, he was a, he, he, patient, he went away, he just came back, and he got up this morning, he couldn't move his neck. He was stuck like this. He came in, uh, I checked him, and I saw, yeah, he had pressure on, on, on his neck, so I did adjust him. He got a little bit better, but the pain was excruciating. And guess what he did? He went to the doctor, and what did the doctor do to him? He gave him painkiller. And you see, because he demanded it. The doctor didn't do anything wrong. He did what, he, what the guy demanded of him. He just gave him some robaxacid. But the thing is, if his problem is not because he's not taking enough pills and he takes the robaxacid, what's going to happen to his neck pain? It's going to get worse. He might feel good tonight. He might be able to sleep. Tomorrow morning when he gets up, it's going to be worse, and he's going to take more medication. And then the problem is going to get worse and worse and worse. Same thing here. So the fasting is not a treatment, but it's a way of life that you're going to incorporate into your life and you're going to start applying it so you see the changes that you need to do so you could reverse the high blood pressure. You could, you could lose the weight. You could, some of you don't need to lose the weight, but you could just get more energy, right? So the next one, the warrior diet. Okay, so the core of the diet consists of eating all meals at the evening during a four hour window. So you see here, I have. So this side of the chart, actually I can use this. This is insulin, okay? Insulin here, and here is fat burning. The green one is fat burning. So when you eat at night, your insulin level in your blood goes up. Every time you put any food in your body, your body has to break that food down. Because you cannot use the, the food in that big chunk. So your body is going to go and it's going to break it down. What is, does anybody know what is the role of insulin? So the role of the insulin is to take sugar and take it into yourself, inside yourself. And any food that you eat, any food that you eat, stimulates insulin. Some foods do it less than others. Protein stimulates insulin. Um, carbohydrates, which are like the, the, the evil now, everybody talks about no carbs and no, no this. Carbohydrates stimulate insulin the most. So when you eat food, so you eat food here, guess what happens to your insulin level? Spikes up. But it's going to spike up until the glucose from your blood has been cleaned up. And when it's cleaned up, it comes down. Right? And then you, you start going into fat burning mode. You, you, so the, when it spikes up, the, that glucose you take it into your body, and your body does some, uh, uh, some um, chemical reactions, and it takes that, that glucose, and he brings it, and he makes it into glycerol. And glycerol is a storage form of, of insulin, like we discussed, of glucose, like we discussed. And then when you need food, it's going to give it to you. So when there's a tiger that runs after you and you need quick energy, that's really quick. You're going to bring that, that, uh, that glycerol, it's going to burn it. And, no, glycogen. What am I saying glycerol? Glycogen. No, my bad. I said glycerol, but it's glycogen. Glycogen. Uh, so it's going to take that glycogen and it's going to give you the energy that you need. It's going to convert it to glucose and then you're going to be able to run away from or climb the tree so you run away from your prey. <laughs> Uh, next one. So the 16-8 fasting. So you, so you, you, you fasting. This is the, this is the easiest thing to do. Let me tell you why. 16 hours of not eating might seem a lot, but consider this. How many hours does the average person sleep? Eight, right? So most people sleep. Let's say, uh, what time? So let's say they sleep at 10. They wake up at six in the morning. So at 6 in the morning, you don't eat anything until lunchtime. So you go 12 hours, so 16 hours without eating. So you do 8, yeah, so my math, hold on, let me think about the math here. So you go 16 hours without eating, so you just skip breakfast. So the 16 8 is really easy because you just skip breakfast and you don't have any other, you don't have any snacks. What you could do with the, with the 16 8, you could do what's called a bulletproof coffee. Has anybody know, heard what the bulletproof coffee is? No, I don't know. So it's coffee. You could Google it and you could find out. But uh, there's lots of products they're going to try to sell it, but I'm going to give you the easy way of doing it. That's what I made this morning. So you take, um, you, you, you have some organic coffee, whatever you make, and then uh, you have a blender, 
and you put one scoop of coconut oil in it, or two, however you want, and you pour the coffee on the, on the coconut oil, you close the lid, and you blend it. And it's going to be so frothy, it's going to be like a, um, it's going to become like a cappuccino almost. Like it's, uh, it's like very, like the fat doesn't separate if you do it, uh, if you mix it enough. And it, it, you drink that, and that the fat's going to go, it's going to give you some nutrients, and you're going to be good for, it's going to take you at least till lunchtime. Question: Must yeah. be blended. You can't just put the coconut oil in. No, because it's going to separate. Ah, okay. For me, yeah, the coffee. It's it has to be boiled coffee. It's got to be hot. The, what I did this morning, I I, I heated my uh, my blender too. So I put some boiling water in it to so keep it warm, and then afterwards I added the coconut oil and uh, coconut oil, and then you put, you add your. Uh, your, your coffee on it. If you want to make it next level, you can put the coconut oil and melt it a little bit so it's it's not solid state, and then you put it on over your coffee. Okay. Uh, I put one, one I put one tablespoon myself. Yeah, I put one tablespoon. If you put one teaspoon, you could try it. And the better the good things about this, you try it, and you see if you like one teaspoon, you put one teaspoon. If you like two teaspoons, you put two teaspoons. If you like one tablespoon, you put one tablespoon. There is no magic formula here. And yeah. <laughs> We're gonna skip that question. No, no, okay. no I'm gonna tell you. No, no, so, no. When you when you do this, no, no, yeah, for sure, yeah. You, that's that's right. But you want to stay away from sweeteners, sugar, anything like this while you're doing the fast, okay? Because sugar, we're talking about it, raises your insulin level, mm -hmm. and and a lot of people that have. Um, that are overweight, that can't lose the weight, they have what's called insulin resistance, right? And the problem with insulin resistance is that your body uh, makes insulin, these are type two diabetes usually, they makes enough insulin, and it sends the insulin there, but the insulin cannot get, come inside the cell and bring the, 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 whatever, the glucose inside the cell. So what the body does then, guess what it does? makes more insulin because it's, oh my God, there's still lots of glucose in the body, so I need to make more insulin. So you become insulin resistant. So when you, and when you take sugar, that raises your insulin. So you, no, I would say no, don't take sugar. Yes. Does it have to be coffee? You could do it with tea as well. Yeah, tea, um, um, yeah, uh, like, I, you could do any green tea, any black tea, doesn't have, you could do coffee, decaf coffee, whatever you like, you could do it, but it has to be, uh, something that's pure and that hasn't been altered and, uh, and uh, um, man hasn't involved himself with making it like uh, like the white bread and stuff, taking stuff out of it. So it has to be pure, okay? So that's this. So basically you skip breakfast and then you have uh, you have an eight window, eight hour window, usually from 12 to eight or one to nine, depending on how you set it up for yourself, okay? So you have an eight hour window that you could eat as much as you want. Uh, as much as you want like this. So you see, so this is, you, you start fasting at night, so it goes here, so you start going into fat burning mode, fat burning mode until the morning, and then you have breakfast, your your insulin goes high, because what causes insulin to go up? Food. Food, food right? So any food, but usually glucose mostly, but any food will cause your insulin to go up, because in the past they used to say, oh no, only carbohydrates make you go up, but now the new science is showing that any food that you take could increase your insulin, some more than others. Glucose more, protein uh, uh, after glucose, and then the fat is the fat is the least, okay? And then you, 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 don't, you don't eat at here for a couple hours, and then you eat again for dinner, and then you go into, into um, fat burning mode. Eat, stop, eat. Pick one or two days out of the week and fast for 24 hours. Eating nothing from dinner one day until dinner the, other, the next day. On the other days, you should eat normal. Okay? So you, you don't need anything for 24 hours. So the whole point of this is to make your body, turn your body into a fat burning machine. Who would like to burn fat while they sleep? Everybody I think would raise their hand, right? So if you want to burn fat while you, to, while you sleep, you gotta, you gotta train your body to become a fat burner. And that's what, that's what we do with these uh, um, fasting. So 5-2 diet, so we talked about this already for five days of the week, you eat normally, for the remaining two days, you should restrict your caloric intake, so you, you do it faster. Yes? Uh, 
Earlier you said it took uh, like uh, 48 to 72 hours before your body would start burning fat. Mm -hmm. So if you alternate day fasting, would your body still not be working off uh, glycogen rather than going to fat? Yeah, yeah, but but you at least you're giving it a chance for the for the insulin to to come down, right? Some people initially they might have to do it longer, right? But most people, I think, if 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 you don't have any uh, diabetes, high blood pressure, cholesterol, you should be able to do it no problem. And you're you're going to start noticing changes, like I, almost immediately you're going to start changing noticing changes in your body structure and your body weight and everything like this. But but it just takes time, yeah. The next one is benefits of fasting. So let's go over some benefits of fasting. Promotes weight loss. That's a good one. Who wants that? Everybody. Improves blood sugar. Okay. So your blood sugar is going to be more balanced, and your 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 your, your uh, hormones, which are responsible for taking all this stuff into your cells and out of your cells, are to become more sensitive and more uh, more specific at what they do. The next thing is keeps heart healthy. Because it doesn't need to work as hard, you're going to start losing weight, so it doesn't need to pump as much, and then you, your heart's going to get healthier. Reduces inflammation. One of the number one causes of a lot of the diseases that we have is inflammation in our bodies, inflammation in our, in our, in our um, arteries, inflammation in our veins. All of these is caused by inflammation. And intermittent fasting and decreasing your low uh, carbohydrate diet definitely decreases the inflammation in your body. The next thing is protects your brain. Okay, uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail about this, but have you heard of ketone bodies? Has anybody heard of ketone bodies? So because when you become a fat burner, your body doesn't have any sugar, so you, your body creates ketones, and then the ketones, that's what crosses the brain, the only thing that could cross the blood-brain barrier to feed your brain food. And when you do, you, yeah, you might have a bad breath of acetone and whatnot, like you, you ketone breaks down in acetyl-CoA and so on. So you might have a bad breath a little bit, but that's only short-lived, but your body, you're, you're not gonna die. People are scared that they're gonna die, you're not gonna die. Your body knows exactly what to do to keep you alive. It really does. But you just have to have faith in it. And don't listen so much to the TV and all these young people that, they, that try to sell you stuff, that give you all, I'm, I'm gonna be blunt here, they give you garbage information. I was listening the other day on CNN or something. They were saying, oh yeah, the coconut oil is bad. You better eat canola oil. Oh, no. See, and they, they're doing this in the mass media. And, and if somebody doesn't have um, a doctor like me that would educate them, they would say, oh yeah, yeah, CNN says it. There's a medical doctor on staff sitting there. She's, she looks very honest and she's telling us that coconut oil is bad. So I'm going to stop eating coconut oil. Oh, those people are crazy. They're like some yoga people. That's, that's what it is, the yoga, the, the, the yoga. I don't want to listen to that, right? But don't always listen to everything that you hear on TV. Even research, medical research is flawed. Even mm -hmm. medical research, a lot of it is flawed because you gotta look at who's, who sponsored, who sponsored oh, yes. the research. A lot of the times, if they wanna say coconut oil is bad, Butter is going to, uh, not mm. butter, but canola oil is going to run a, run a study and it's, it's <laughs> going to pay the doctor tons of money. And guess what? Because he's paying the doctor lots of money, what do you think the doctor is going to say? No, canola oil is really bad, but thank you for all the money you gave me. No, he's going to say, no, canola oil is actually very good. It's better than um, coconut oil. So everybody stop eating coconut oil. That's what they would tell you. But if, if you just step outside and look at the big picture and say, okay, so is this person looking for my best interest or is this person just looking to make a buck off you? Right? And if it's making a buck off you, so, oh, it didn't come off like that. <laughs> so making some money off you, so then you get up and then just, you get, you, we got to start thinking on our own. And that's the main thing. Um, all right, so decreases hunger. I got to go fast because it's been an hour. And it's free. That's the main major thing. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything to fast. You don't have to go to the gym. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. You don't have to buy any expensive uh, meal replacement uh, or uh, Weight Watchers or anything like this. It's free. And the whole principle is, you see, people tell you you need to eat more to lose weight. How does that make sense? Like six times a year. If you eat more, you're going to lose weight. Does that make logical sense? No. But, but ask, ask any child. Ask any child. 
How do you lose weight? You know what he's going to tell you? Stop eating. <laughs> Why? Because the child hasn't been uh, conditioned or brainwashed or whatever you want to call it. But if you want to lose weight, stop eating, you'll lose weight. It's a guarantee. Okay? Next. Promotes weight loss. Uh, you will become a fat burning machine. I'm going to go fast. This is similar to the ketogenic diet. And it, so basically, a study showed that it reduces fat while retaining both muscle and strength. So you're not going to lose muscle. Improves blood sugar. Lowers blood sugar by 12%. Lowers insulin levels by 53 Fasting caused weight loss and a decrease in appetite, but it significantly reduced blood sugar level. So your blood sugar went down because your insulin became sensitive and it knows what to, what, how to take care of all those cells. Uh, keep heart healthy. Studies show that intermittent fasting can help keep your heart healthy. Um, risk factors, uh, lowering certain risk factors, increases HDL, decreases LDL, and improves sur uh, survival rate from heart attack by 60%. Uh, reduces inflammation, we talk about this. It, so, oh, inflammation is a normal immune response to injury. So whenever you get injured, there is inflammation that happens in your body. Internally, your organs also have inflammation. Irritable bowel. Um, leaky gut, like acid reflux, all of these things are caused because there's inflammation in your body. So intermittent fasting reduces, uh, it reduces your inflammation. Chronic inflammation can lead to heart disease, diabetes, obesity, and cancer. So all of these diseases here, all of these diseases are caused by inflammation inside your body. And intermittent fasting reduces inflammation. So fasting is associated with a decrease in markers of inflammation. So, uh, so scientists, which are very smart, they do all kinds of lab tests, which they show that markers of inflammation decrease while you fast. Okay? So why wouldn't anybody want to try this at least once? It's beyond me. Right? All it takes is, is the willingness and the, and, the, and, the, and, and the fortitude to say, you know what, I'm going to do it. I don't care what my husband, my wife, my, my friend, my colleague what says about it. Don't even tell anybody you do it. Just do it. It's so, so, so simple. Skip breakfast and eat lunch, and then you come home and you eat dinner and you're done. Don't have any snacks. Don't have anything that you're going to eat at, at work. If you're hungry, guess what you're going to do? Drink water. Drink water or have a coffee. If you like coffee, you drink a coffee. If you like tea, you make a tea, herbal tea. Today I had mint tea. So that's what, that's what you do, right? And protects your brain. Helps protect it against changes in memory and increases learning function. So since I've been doing this, my, I, I honestly could tell you that I feel, let me put this here. Okay. I feel like my brain is more sharp. I could, do, like, I could do more calculations together in my head. And you know sometimes you get this memory fog, you want to do something, and then you say, okay, let me go do this first. And then you come back and say, what was it that I was going to do? This hasn't happened to me in the past, uh, I would say, 10, 15 days. Right? So it improves me memory. Uh, uh, helps protect against accelerated aging process, um, and it's it's ideal for people. It prevents helps prevent disorders like Alzheimer's disease. And Alzheimer's disease is is your brain cells. Uh, have you ever seen an Alzheimer's brain shrunk? Like a brain, let's say, should be this size. Alzheimer's brain it becomes like this size. It shrinks, and that's why they're slower. They they, they don't have uh, like the cognitive function goes away, and this helps. Um, this, this can slow the progression of, the, of disorders like Alzheimer's. Decreases hunger. Um, it's going to take a while if I go over this. Oh, actually, it does. It shows one hour, but it's only... No, oh, okay, I'm good. I'm rushing. I thought, it's showing one hour here. I made a mistake. It's only 30 minutes. Okay, I got time. I got time. Okay. Got time. I'm, I'm on track then. So, decreases hunger. How does it decrease hunger? Because what did I say happens when your body starts becoming a fat burner. Your body burns fat, and fat comes to your, uh, your body brings the fat inside, and it turns it into energy that you could use. It, it could, it, your fat could also be converted to glucose. So the fat could be converted to glucose, and then glucose goes into your blood, and then your blood is, is back to normal. But mostly, fat burn, when you become fat burning and you go to keto, ketosis, it makes ketone bodies, which we already discussed. So if you have, you don't need appetite here because hungry you will be. No, you will not. You will not. Have you ever tried it? Okay, so so how many days did you try it? I've done it um, over a period of time. So my longest fast was uh, 
about like a week. Okay. Only on weekends. Yeah, of course. We all gonna be hungry to a certain degree, right? But then you give yourself something to fill your stomach. And we discussed what you could give yourself. You could give yourself liquids such as water, coffee, and so on. Uh, but bo I said bone broth earlier. You could do bone broth, but it's got to be homemade. Don't buy the, the Costco home broth that comes in a four pack and then you can put, drink that. No, not, none of that bone broth. And, and, and bone broth, who knows how to make bone broth? Okay, so it's very simple. You know, you know, you know I'll give you the simple recipe. Very easy, right? One is, if you don't know how to do bone broth, you can Google it, and you get, the, you get it, and somebody's going to teach you how to do it, and see the one that has the most reviews and the most likes. That's how you know if a video on Google is good, on YouTube is good. So the one that has the most views and the most likes. Okay? If you see a video that has a lot of views, but, but no likes, don't look at it and don't listen to it. Okay? Because people, before you have gone, and they know this is BS. So hopefully I'm going to put this video up, you guys are going to go to it, you're going to like it, and you're going to share it. <laughs> you put it on your social media. But uh, uh, bone broth, very easy. You, you go to your butcher shop, and you say, I like bones. And if you like chicken bones, you get chicken bones. If you like uh, beef, you, um, if you like um, cow, uh, cow, uh, cow bones, you get cow bones. And then all you do, I like chicken more. So you put the bones in, in a big pot, you put it with water, and if you want, you could uh, chop up celery, onions, whatever you want, you can put it in there, carrots, whatever you want, you can put in there, and you just let it boil. For, you could let it boil, minimum I think is four hours, you can do four to eight hours, or you, some people even leave it overnight, so all the, all the stuff from the, inside the bones, all the nutrients are inside the bones, are going to seep out, and they're going to go in, the, in that broth. And then that broth, what you do, um, you could, you could, Freeze it, or actually no. What you should do first, you 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 put it in the freezer, so or in the fridge, so the fat separates. And then the next day, you scrape off the fat, you throw the fat out, and throw it in your garden. <coughs> throw it in your garden. If you have a garden, throw the fat in your garden, because it's going to be nutrition for your soil, right? Your plants are going to use it, and uh, it's going to decompose. And if there's animals, they're going to come eat it and uh, let them have it. Have it. <laughs> yeah, you might attract some raccoons. But, uh, but so, and then what you do with the, with with the, um, with the chicken broth, um, you could either put it in 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 a, in a in a little pot and freeze it. Ice, and, like ice. Yeah, you can make it in an ice cube, or you can make it the whatever you want. You can put it in a tray, and then you cut it up afterwards, and you could put it in in little bags and put it in your freezer. Whenever you need something, the chicken broth, you grab a little piece, you put it in, the, um, you you let it melt, and then you could either drink it or you make soup from it. Okay, so that's how soup is, is made. But they make it seem like it's so hard, you need to have a Vitamix and you need to spin it so, super fast to make soup. This is how you make soup, <laughs> okay? And you can flavor it the way you want to. If you want like plain soup, just add vegetables and mix it up and then there we go, you got soup, okay? But it's a process, it takes at least, uh, you make more soup than I do, so how many hours does it take minimum? 24, 30 hours, that's how long I let it cook. Yeah, so what? she's, she's making, she's, she's making, but, but you could do it, Minimum of four hours you need to do it. Four to 12 hours is what's recommended, but you could let it simmer down long, but then all the stuff that's in the bone, the bone marrow, all the, all the uh, nutrients from the bone marrow is gonna sit out. Can you okay. pressure cook it? Or Pardon me? Can you use a pressure cooker? Uh, you probably could, so but I mean, it's better to yeah, just let it slow. simmer yeah. slowly. Yeah, you, a slow it's a slow. Yeah, you, you, slow. you put it in a slow cooker and just leave, um, Bring it to a boil and then just bring it down to a medium or medium low and then just let it simmer there. Okay? And so that's that. Leptin resistance. So leptin, okay, let's talk about leptin. Leptin is a hormone. Does anybody know what part of your body makes leptin? Does it have the answer here? No. No? It's your fat cells. Your fat cells make leptin. So leptin is basically the hormone uh, by the, yeah, she, the answer is right here. Nobody wants to be <laughs> Yeah, leptin is uh, by the fat cell that helps signal when it's time to stop eating. So when you're full, when your stomach is full, leptin is released and it tells, it tells your, 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 your brain, okay, I have enough food, stop, I don't want any more, the hunger is gone, that's good. So you, that's what your brain does. But when leptin, when you become leptin resistant, 
the leptin comes out, but there is no the receptors can't hear it. You hyper, it goes to the hypothalamus. Your hypothalamus can't hear it, and it doesn't do anything. And that's what people that eat they keep on eating, they they keep on eating and eating and eating, and then they get like this, and they say, oh, I don't know why I become like this. Well, it's because you eat. <laughs> you want to stop? You want to lose weight? Start by stop eating. But I'm always hungry because you have hormonal issues. So you gotta deal with those hormonal issues because if you don't, then your 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 weight's only gonna go up like this. But if you learn and it's it's it's, it's a challenging thing, uh, but you have to learn to trust your instincts. Your body knows exactly what to do. Your body knows exactly what to do. Does anybody have to teach a child how to go to the bathroom for the first time? No. No, no, no. So, so oh, when to have a bowel movement? Oh. Better question. Does anybody have need to teach a child how to have a bowel movement? No. 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 Does anybody need to teach a child how to breathe? No. Does anybody need to teach a child how to close his eyes? No. No. How does that work? From brain. Who, who teaches them? Yeah. So, like, the mother nature has 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 created us to be perfect. <laughs> yeah, like I, because it's being video, it's being video. And if I use that word, some people on the video they might not like my video anymore. Okay. They will say he used the G word, right? So <laughs> he used the G word. But yeah, so Mother Nature and uh, yeah, it's part of survival. You have to do it. And um, did you know there's a reflex in a child, a newborn baby? You could Google this when you go home. It's called the crawl, crawl reflex. You know, crawling. Did you know that if a newborn baby is born naturally without drugs, without medicine, just natural, natural uh, vaginal birth, you put that baby on the mom's belly, guess what the baby's going to want to do? Crawl. Crawl where? To the nipple. To the nipple. Who teaches them how to crawl? Uh, because I thought that you kids only learn to crawl when they're three, four, five months old. But at, at birth, they're able to do it because that's a survival instinct that they have to crawl up to the nipple and start getting food. Right? Crawl reflex. But now, no, nobody sees it anymore because everybody's born in a hospital, everybody's being injected with the, the mother, uh, is being injected with epidurals and so on and so forth. So they, these kind of reflexes are not seen. But if you if you do know people that do natural birth, and I'm, I'm part of a group that does that, it's um, uh, what's it? ICPA, International uh, Chiropractic, uh, it's ICPA, it's a group that, that teaches moms how to be, uh, to give birth naturally and all that stuff and educate them. So leptin resistance, uh, fasting helps reverse leptin resistance. So basically anything that's not working, you fast, it's going to start working. Okay? Uh, fasting advantages. It's flexible. Anybody can do it. It's very flexible. You do it on your schedule. It's convenient. Okay? You eat at your own pace. You eat whatever you want to eat. It's convenient. But oh yeah, no, not whatever you want. <laughs> I gotta be careful because you guys are gonna go home. You're gonna go. Okay, he said I could go to McDonald's. I need whatever I want to eat. So processed food, you gotta cut it out of your your diet. What are some examples of processed food? So I want you guys to name them so I know you know. What are they? French fries. Processed cheese. French fries. Sausages. Sausages. What else? Open foods. Bacon. 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 Actually, they think is okay. Good. Not, right. Not but, but one thing that's processed and we eat a lot of it bread. is bread. Yeah. Bread is processed. But in the old cultures, they used to. So they say, well, in the old culture, they used to eat bread. But the bread they used to eat, they used to ground the wheat themselves by hand, and they used to oh, break me. it up, and it was whole wheat, and it was hard to digest. That that bread they made, it wasn't easy to like digestible like the bread that we have right now. So. Stay away from bread, stay away from any sugar, uh, no no soft drinks. Is Diet Coke good for you? No. Oh, good. Everybody's on the same page. I like that. Okay? <laughs> so Diet Coke, so it's convenient, but you got to know what to pick. Like the food you, you pick, you got to know what to do with them. Okay? It's free. doesn't cost you anything. Who likes free? I like free. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's completely free, and you do it at your own pace. It's simple. Once you understand the basics, it's simple. Right? And it's not a challenge. And I know a lot of you, I see it in your eyes right now. You say, oh, how could it be simple? I tried it once and it was so hard. I, I couldn't do it. It was only lasted like, like, like for seven days. And I said, I'm never going to do it again. Mm -hmm. but, there's no determination on that. So that's why. 
that. That's why we're going to keep you accountable in this office. We're going to keep you accountable, and we're going to go over. Uh, it's simple. Yeah, we did this. Add to any diet, okay? If you don't eat meat, you can fast. If you don't eat meat, wheat, you can fast. If you don't, if you have no allergy, you can fast. If you don't have time, you can fast. If you don't have money, you can fast. If you are traveling all the time, you can fast. And if you don't cook, you can fast. That's the best for me. <laughs> if you don't cook, just fast. All right, my personal routine. So what I do is in the morning, I skip breakfast, okay? So I have a coffee or tea is okay. And the bulletproof coffee, we discuss how you do that. You coconut oil, coconut uh, oil and you add some hot coffee and you mix it. Yes? People who do not take tea or coffee, tell them they don't have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not that this is part of the game here. Sure. No, it's not. Right. Just drink water. Just yeah. Drink water. So, okay. so I should have put that here too. Coffee, tea is okay, but water is also recommended. Yeah. So you can flavor your water if you don't like just eating lemon. drink plain water. I already said it. Put some lemon, lemon some honey. lime. You can even, uh, I don't know, strawberries. No, don't do it yet. So lemon. just put lemon and lime. That's not going to increase your glucose and mix it. You could put well, cucumbers. Uh, yeah, you could you you could do that. Yeah, that's that's all right. Yeah. So that so morning skip breakfast. And, and then I have, um, in my case, I have, uh, I drink lots of fluids throughout the day. I drink tea. But if you like water, then you drink water. But one thing that could happen with fasting is that your, your blood, um, your salt will come down. Right? So just, you could sprinkle some sea salt in whatever you're eating or even in your water, you put some sea salt. I know it doesn't, uh, it doesn't sound appetizing, but when you're lacking salt in your body, you put a little bit of sea salt in your water, it's going to taste wonderful. So lunch, first meal of the day. Um, so at 12 p.m., uh, you could have lunch, but now lately I've been skipping even lunch and I just have dinner. So I've been doing the warrior diet lately, okay? And coffee, tea, again, you could do... Um, in between there and dinner last meal 7 8 p.m. you have your last meal and then you you repeat it again the next day and, and you see the benefit of, uh, of intermittent fasting if tomorrow you don't feel like you have a meeting and you have to go with your friends or you you have to lunch meeting with your friends you don't have to fast you just eat no problem right but now since you know what's good what's bad then when you order your food at the restaurant you're going to pick the food that you, you is that 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 you feel is better for you and it's very very simple and you don't have to like oh no today i got to have my calories this much and this much there, there's no counting calories there's no weed or 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 um, nutritional facts you got to count or because that gets confusing i used to be confused about this well, like in terms of no, no, you can do that. So if your schedule, you, you want to eat at 9, you eat at 9, but then the, you, you take 16 hours. So 9, so 12 is 9 in the morning, plus 6 is uh, 3. So you start eating your first meal at 3. Suppose, like, today I only had lunch. Okay. And then I didn't eat since then. Sure. I didn't have breakfast. Sure. And I can cook home. Now it's really possible. What time did you have your lunch? 12. Okay. So... Yeah, so that's a little, so like you should have eaten by now, right? So your dinner, but that's okay. So, so if I eat, then it's basically... But you, you, you see, you could switch it up a little bit. And if, it, if you do a 15-9 uh, instead of 16-8, that's fine. But just try to be closer, like make your fasting time longer. The longer it is, the more chances your body has to start burning um, fat. But if, it, if you don't do the long fast, then your body will still gonna want sugar to, 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 to burn for energy, right? Uh, dinner, 7 p.m. and so on. So you have unlimited power. Okay, no problem, okay, thank you. Thanks for coming. So you have unlimited power. We discussed, we talked about this too. You have to make the decision that I wanna do this and I'm gonna at least try it. There are some people that shouldn't do it. If you're diabetic, not diabetic, but if you, if you have type 1 diabetes, you, you could do it, or, or, you, or even type 2 diabetes, but you have to be careful. You have to monitor your glucose, okay? You have your insulin thingy. You got to check your glucose, and if it was too low, then you got to take some sugar, I guess, to, 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 to boost up your, your glucose. Uh, but uh, nursing, uh, pregnant women should not do it. 
people, uh, women that are nursing should not do it. Why do you think they shouldn't do it? They need the calories. For what? Because if they have a growing baby inside their, uh, inside their body, and that baby needs all the nutrients to grow, and the baby goes from uh, like two cells, and nine months they become something this size. Yeah. So they need uh, like the calories and, and uh, nutrients to feed that baby. Who else shouldn't do it? Who's grow, who grows really fast as well? Teenagers, right? Kids under 18 should not do it. And the reason is pretty, and the reason is pretty obvious because they're also growing and they need all the all the uh, nutrients to grow. They, you know, like I remember my, my my nephew. I didn't see him for two weeks and he comes back and he's tall. He's like he's almost my height. Oh, no, no, he's not that that tall. Yeah, but they grow fast. So so kids and, and teenagers should not be doing it. Okay, and you have freedom. You're free to choose what you want to do. If you want to do this only once a week, then try it once a week. It doesn't have to be regimented, but if you, if you want to commit to it, just commit and just try it and say, you know what, for the next 30 days, I'm, I'm going to do intermittent fasting. I'm going to do the 16, 8 fasting um, during the week. On the weekends, I'm not going to do it because I'm, I'm going to spend time with my family. I'm going to be, I'm going to have to do breakfast and brunch and all that stuff. So I'm not going to do it on the weekends, but on the weekdays, Monday to Friday, when I go to work, I'm going to do it. Skip breakfast and have lunch at 1. <laughs> What's easier? What's easier than this? Nothing. But you just have to take the you just have to take the gamble and don't and hold on, I'll answer your question. You gotta take the gamble and not be afraid that oh I'm gonna starve to death. What am I gonna do? Whoa, my muscle. My friend told me that if you fast, all your muscles are gonna melt and you're gonna look skinny like the people in Africa, the the Somalians or something, you're gonna look like that. Do you wanna look like that? No, don't fast, it's dangerous. That's what people say. But you know what? You came to a doctor, I educated you, but you're going to go home and what's going to happen? You're first, you're going to say, hey, you know what? I was at this doctor, he was really good. He talked me about intermittent fasting. I'm going to do it. Oh, no, don't do it. It's dangerous. I read something on uh, Esquire that said it's bad for you. And you're going to listen to that friend. Even though an expert was teaching you for an hour, hour and a half about intermittent fasting, you're going to go and listen to your friend who told you that she read it in, in the Toronto Sun. Right, okay, now you can ask your question. I hope I answered your question so you won't have to ask it now. No, I was just wondering, when you want the bowl of coffee, does it really leave you satisfied? Like, I normally have eggs every morning. I love my eggs. Mm -hmm. so if I'm going to give that up, I'm going to be full of you no know, best answer I'm going to give you? Right. I don't want to have a headache on the job. Okay, okay. So let me let me talk. Good point. Headache. Are you going to have a headache? Yes. Sure. Maybe. Maybe. I didn't. I didn't get a headache. Right? I don't mean. If you're healthy and your body's working right and you've been getting adjusted and most of you have been getting adjusted, you will not get a headache. But if you do, no problem. This is just part of the process. Your body's just adjusting and it's just getting used to it. I remember when I was a kid and I was hungry, I always used to get a headache. But I, haven't, I didn't get a headache now because I'm not hungry, because my body is learning to use its fat for energy and it's going to burn the fat to give us energy. So you might get a headache, but it's short-lived. It might, it might last you three, four, five, maybe seven days. But if you, if that's you, a lot. I know it's a lot, but especially if you're dealing with people, you don't want to have a headache and be miserable yourself. Yeah, I'm on a job, so I don't want. To, okay, I so don't start mean. it on a day you're not working, right. right? So, so you might, you most of us maybe don't work two or three days in a row. So during those three days, start the day so on the day that you're not working, and do it for three days, and you can say, oh man, I didn't get a headache and everything's good, because now you're scaring yourself from even trying it. You're giving yourself all these objections. And, and you, you're, you're not even want to try it because you say, I'm going to get a headache. I know, I know. I'm no, I know what headaches feel like. I okay, mean, yeah. And it's not a good feeling. And yeah. if you're dealing with public... But listen, let me, let me tell you this. If you get a headache for two days, mm -hmm. but afterwards you don't, and your body starts melting, and you start looking great, and you start reversing disease, and you start lo losing your diabetes, your high blood pressure, your cholesterol, it's would fine. you rather have the headaches for two days, maybe even seven days, no, that's fine. So I, I take your point on your day off yeah. started then. Mm -hmm. that, that makes sense. But I was kind of hesitant about doing it when you go into the job and I have to be dealing with a headache. You see, right now you don't know what it feels like to fast. You might not even get a headache. But that's, mm -hmm. the, that's the side effect that you might get. But you might not even get a headache. So don't always think of the bad things. Think, so, think of the good thing. What if you do it 
and you have high blood pressure, and after 20 days, your blood pressure is normal, and you go to the doctor, he takes your high blood pressure, say, doc, I haven't been taking my blood pressure medication because whenever I take it, I feel like tired. So I stopped taking it, and now um, my blood pressure, I'm not gonna tell you to stop taking medication, that's not my job, mm -hmm. right? That's your medical doctor that's gonna do that. And, and you, what if your blood pressure decreases? What if you have insulin, you're diabetic, you're type 2 diabetic, and you start doing this, and your diabetes goes away, and you, you don't have diabetes anymore? What if that happens? What if, why don't you think like that? Get there is a step. Yeah, I know, but we're getting there. So, <laughs> next, the, you see, the people who say they don't have time to take care of themselves will soon discover they're spending all their time being sick. That's Patricia Alexander. Right. Okay. So this is what's going on. And now you see, everything I told you, it's great. It's great information. You can start applying it. You can start doing it. But there's one system in your body that controls all of that. What's the system that controls everything? It's your nerve system. You see, the power, the, turn your power on. The nervous system. You can go a month without food. And there's a guy that went a whole year without food. And he survived. You can go days without water. Gandhi, when he did his fast, he went days without water, right? You can go minutes without air. You, some people could hold their breath for like a minute or two or maybe even five, ten minutes, some people can hold their breath. But you cannot go one second without nerve supply. You cut the nerve supply to your body, you're dead. You cut the nerve to your heart, you're dead. You could eat all the organic food that you want, you could intermittent fast all you want, but you cut the nerve that goes to your heart right here, you cut the nerve to any organ, that organ is going to be done, right? So, so you see, the nerve system, how does it work? For you to be healthy, your brain has to send messages. You see, your brain sends messages down the spinal cord and all the nerves like this. If these messages are able to go, then everything works properly. But now let's, let's imagine that one of these bones, which is in your back, shifts out of place. Okay? Or, there, or you fall down, you hurt yourself, and now there's pressure on one of these nerves. And... And some of the symptoms of having pressure on the nerve are what? You might have numbness and tingling in your arms. You might have numbness and tingling in your arms. You might have indigestion. You might have constipation. You might be tired all the time. You might, be, um, you might have lower back pain. Whatever the case is, it, might ca it will cause you a symptom. And if this pressure stays, that organ at the end of, the, of this nerve, which is, let's say, in this case, the stomach, will it work properly? No. No. And you're going to also have some... Uh, internal organ symptoms such as high, like acid reflux, ulcers, and, and, and you, if, you're, if the nerve goes to your stomach is not working properly, you might get too much acid in your stomach. And if you have too much acid, at first you might feel the acid reflux, but eventually it's going to cause, it might cause a hole in your stomach that's called an ulcer. Right? And when you have these kind of things, then um, our system just teaches us, okay, just go cover the symptoms. But nobody looks, okay, what caused that ulcer to develop? Was it because I wasn't taking enough Zantac or Nexium or, 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 or um, Tecta? Or was it because I'm just not healthy? All we talk about in this office is to make sure that you guys are as healthy as possible so you can live a long, happy, healthy life that, to take care of yourself and everybody that's around you as well. So, um, so this is just chiropractic wellness patients. So you see studied 311 chiropractic patients after 65 years of, uh, of and older who had received maintenance care for five years or longer versus healthy citizens the same age. Results, chiropractic patients spend 31% less uh, than the national uh, average for healthcare. They, they had 50% less medical provider visits. Their, their health habits were radically better than overall populations and they had far less cigarette consumption because they were educated on what health is, because they, they went to places, the seminars like this, and 98.5% believe that care to be considerably or extremely valuable. And chiropractic wellness patients had uh, fewer hospital admissions, uh, less days hospitalized, and uh, less surgeries, and, uh, and less, uh, less money spent on pharmaceuticals. See, my parents, they've been getting adjusted since I became a chiropractor, in, actually before. I became a chiropractor in 2003, and I've been adjusting them probably like my since 2001. And my, my dad's 73 or 74 years old, 73. My mom's 63. Guess how many medications they take? None. Zero. How many 73-year-olds you know that doesn't take any medications? 
right? Because he's healthy, and because he's been taking care of himself, and and because I adjust him, I take care of his nerve system and everything like this. Um, next, some warning signs that you do not you do have pressure on your nerves, and these are all headaches, menstrual pressure, high blood pressure, depression, IBS, insomnia, sciatica, asthma, numbness. Constipation, acid reflux, fatigue, dizziness, and neck pain. So, if I know most of your patients here, but you have friends at home that have all these problems and they're not doing anything about it. They just think that they got to drink some uh, coconut water and it's going to go away. They just think that if they intermittent fast, it's going to go away. It might, but it probably won't because if they have pressure on their nerves in their body, that pressure will not go away just miraculously. You need a specific adjustment, and all of you, there's at least 20 of you in here, all of you are coming here, and many of you have been coming here for a couple of years to get adjusted, to relieve that pressure from your nerves. And that's the missing link. If you had intermittent fasting, if everybody does intermittent fasting, and everybody gets adjusted, guess what's going to happen to our healthcare system? Guess what's going to happen to our healthcare system? Less people, less money would be, you see my vision is this, my vision, I see it sometimes, but it's because I need more people to come on board, but my vision literally is this, my vision is to see, and again, I'm not saying this in a competitive way, I don't want anybody to lose business or anything like this, but my vision is to, to, to see hospitals, hospitals where people go to get adjusted or to get education about this kind of stuff, to learn how to stay healthy, and medical doc or emergency doctors have to be in a clinic like this. Because they, we don't have that many emergencies anymore. That's really my vision. And I see hospitals, the parking lot that's massive, to be used for farming. So they're gonna they're gonna take it out, they're gonna because we don't need to park anymore. Everybody walks around and takes the bus everywhere. So you're gonna make make that parking lot into a big farm so people have a say if you live in a condo you can't really farm so everybody's going to have a little square area there where they could farm their own food and if it, if we're in canada we could even cover it up so it's like a, a greenhouse for, so even in the winter time we could have it that's that's what i want to see happening but you know what we're spending money on we're spending money on buying more gadgets in the hospitals to make to do more tests to do more surgeries that cost way more money than for, for a simple person to come in and get educated and understand what they need to do for, to, to, to gain their health back. So um, this is what I see and this is what I want to see. So the only way that's going to happen is if every single one of you tells somebody to come in here. Here or not even here. Just tell me if they live in Vancouver, if they live in Winnipeg, if they live in Brantford. Tell me and I'll find out somebody that, that could do the same thing that we're doing here. Because uh, the bottom line is if everybody was on, on board with this and everybody understood what health is and what they need to do to be healthy, would that be better for our society? Of course it would be. Would that save us money? Of course it will. Would our taxes go down? Yes, it will. And we're going to have so much surplus because now all the money spent on stupid stuff like doing surgeries on people that don't want to take care of themselves, which is okay. I'm willing to support them but because nobody has educated them about it. So why don't we get those people that are waiting in surgery, waiting to do all these bad things, bring them in here, educate them, and it's not for everybody. Not everybody's going to come in here and say, yeah, I want to try this. If they don't, no problem. It's, it's the, at least we tried. At least we, we took them out. You, um, I didn't want to say the horse example, but uh, because it's, it's rude, but I didn't say it. You could bring a horse, you know the, the example, but I'm not going to say it. So, but you, you can't make them drink the water. He has to make that decision to drink the water. Yeah. And it's, uh, we're not giving you any Kool-Aid or anything, don't worry, like a, the, yeah. we're not going to brainwash anybody. This is just common sense information. Uh, next, uh, yeah, so if, if you have any friends and you tell them to come in here, what's going to happen? The first step is to get them signed up to come in and get evaluated. Uh, we're going to do a complete history consultation examination. We're going to take x-rays if necessary. We're going to do a postural exam and we're going to do spinal range of motion. Usually this exam costs about $200, but for you guys that was here and, uh, and all your friends, if, they, if you tell them to come in, you give them my business card. If they come in here and they show you a business card and they say, so-and-so um, um, referred me, sorry, my, my blanking out here. So-and-so <laughs> referred me, then they're going to get the free examination for them and their entire family. 
They could come in here, have an examination, and if they if that's something they want to do, we could explain to them what exactly they need to do. If this is not something they want to do, then they don't have to do it. And oh yeah, one more thing. Who has Facebook? Raise your hand if you have Facebook. Don't be shy. I know everybody has Facebook, and you all have at least 300 friends on Facebook. Okay, so what are you going to do when you get home or even now take your smartphone, everybody has a smartphone, go to Facebook, type York Family Chiropractic is here in Facebook.com, York Family Chiropractic, YFC Chiropractic, and go like my page. Okay, and leave a comment, leave a comment, say, hey, great talk, I, and ask me questions on Facebook. I always answer my questions, so ask me questions, interact with me. Once I post my video on, on YouTube, what I want you guys to do is go to my YouTube video and like it and also share it, and also comment on it. <laughs> I'm asking, I'm demanding, you know? All right, so Facebook, to go on Facebook, you go YFC, no, YF, YF Chiropractic. Facebook.com front slash YF Chiropractic. That's gonna to take to my Facebook page, and you could just press the like button here, and uh, we would love comments. Uh, your comments mean the world to me, and I would, I would make sure I answer them as quickly as possible, and, uh, and give you any uh, advice uh, or feedback. That's the right there, the lavender yeah. field looks nice. Yeah, <laughs> and if you have any questions, if you have any private questions or anything that you want to ask me, you can always send me a private message on, on Facebook or ask me uh, privately in the office. Anybody have any questions before we call it? Um, if you want me to do presentations in your home or at your church, in your groups, you could invite me and I could do these kind of presentations uh, everywhere. So it doesn't just have to be my office. Soon, if you guys know any places where we could do the talks and host them, then we'll be happy to, to go to those places. Oh, uh, you want to take a picture of this? Oh, just grab it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. you got it. Okay, so any other questions? So who's going to try it? How come not everybody has their hand up? Who's going to try this? I have to wait for the weekend. Who's going to try No, but it doesn't matter. Are you going to try it? I didn't say, are you going to try it today? Who's going to try this? Raise your hand. You can ask question. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking fasting the 16 hours is kind of tough. And I'm thinking instead of, can I skip lunch instead of breakfast? So I have, I'm doing 12-12. Um, you you can, but then that's not going to bring you into the fat burning mode. Maybe a slower fat burning mode, you think? No, it's, it's <laughs> good. No, because then you eat and you get you put sugar back into your body, so it, so you so just don't eat in the morning. So I'm thinking of six. Do you work night shift? I work day shift. Okay, so six seven o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. and eat, and my next meal is seven o'clock at night. No. So no. if you eat at seven o'clock in the morning, then your next meal should be uh, three. yeah at uh, thirteen. So it should be yeah thirteen. No, this is four three p.m. Yeah, yeah ten. Yeah. So at eleven. So just do this. What's your last meal of the day usually? Evening. What time? Before seven. So let's say seven. Mm -hmm. So you stop eating at seven, mm -hmm. and the next day you eat at uh, eleven oh. in the morning. And then what after that? Seven again before seven. Uh, yeah. yeah, you eat your last meal at 7. And once a week, you could throw this in, you don't eat for 24 hours. You mm -hmm. eat at dinner, and then you eat again at dinner. You could make a bulletproof coffee, you could drink that, and that's going to fill you. Trust me, you're not going to get hungry. You just have fears right now. Whatever you said. Oh, hold on. Actually, I didn't say this, and I'm going to mention this right now, before you ask the question. Who wakes up in the morning, and they're super hungry? Raise your hand if you wake up hungry. Sometimes Usually, most of us don't because, uh, like, our hormones do do something that throws glucose into our cells. So we're not when we wake up, we're not even hungry. So the easiest meal to skip is breakfast, right? And that's the one you No, no. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry. Right. She said something. I gotta cover this too. She said breakfast is the most important meal. Yes, that's what they've been telling us. But I've just told you that they've been telling us lots of. Um, yes. Lots of what? BS. Lies. BS. Crap, I was going to say, but I didn't. Fake news. Fake news. Fake news. Yeah, fake news. Like Donald Trump. It's all fake news. It's all fake news. Um, I'm in the middle of this 16 8 diet, okay. and I've lost 7 pounds in 2 weeks. Okay. And I'm thinking about doing it because I'm not eating. Yeah. 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 Y
I'm not hungry in the morning. Like, I probably get hungry in the afternoon when I'm the supposed to eat. The first week was tough, right? The, the first, first three, four weeks. The first week, I almost didn't lose, and then the second week, it started yeah. to drop off. Yeah. And, um, the, and the first week, I was hungry at night, because I'm a night eater. Yeah. And, then I, and then I just got used to it. Like, right. It's so easy. Once you say to your mind, you don't eat anymore, mm -hmm. it's so much easier, because you don't have to think about what you're eating, what you're not eating. You just say, I'm not eating from this time to this time. And I have like lunch and then I have dinner and I'm fine. So you remember this. <laughs> you you have the power, right? And you can talk yourself out of it. And just think of it this way. This is how I always talk myself into doing something. If somebody else has done it, why can't I do it? Why do I have reservations? Why do I have hesitations to taking the action? Because I know it's not easy. It's something that goes completely against the grain. Skipping breakfast, that's the most important. That's what they've been telling us. You know why they've been telling us that? Why? Because they want to sell you stuff to eat in the breakfast. Cereal. Eggs. Cereal. No, eggs is okay. They don't get money. They get money from cereal. And again, they eat eggs. They process cereal. Right. But yes, so cereal. And then why do you think they want us to snack? Snickers. You know, once it crunches your hunger, have a Snickers, have a Coke, it, it like quenches your thirst and also fills your stomach. <laughs> right? So, they're not supposed to do that. I'm diabetic. Sure. And that's why I'm yeah. eating six times, but I don't eat like a lot. Now, when you see, bit. even diabetic can do it. However, like I said, with the diabetic, they have to be careful and they have to be supervised. Okay, so if you're gonna do it, you gotta make sure that you you you're gonna keep track of your glucose, and when your glucose goes down, you have to uh, make sure you bring it back up. But exactly, because when you are hungry, uh, you will not eat, and then you feel hungry, then will you eat more. But then if you are eating six times, but then every two hours only a little bit, then you don't feel. That's a myth again yes. that you eat well, more when you're hungry. Little... No, I know, I know, yeah. but that's because you're a sugar burner and you're diabetic. Yeah. That's why you feel like that. Yeah. But if you're a fat burner, you don't even get to that level of hunger. You don't get to that level. Like the only reason why today I'm feeling my stomach going because uh, the muffin, because the muffin, the muffin, the muffin which is which is okay. But you know, vacation meal. Sometimes you could have vacations. That's okay. And fasting doesn't mean when you go to a wedding and there's a big cake and it looks so delicious that you don't eat it. You could have those days off that people that are on medications, they got to be more careful. They might need to uh, go talk to a specialist like Jason Fung that, that promotes fasting, and he's going to guide you to be able to do it. Because unfortunately, I cannot tell you to stop, to stop taking or start taking any medication. That's not my field of expertise. But what I can do is I, I can make sure that to teach you the things that you need to do to get healthy. And if you apply the concepts that I'm telling you, and there's pretty simple, I think, and you just apply them and, and start thinking, okay, you know what, I'm going to let go of my limiting belief of, of I have to have breakfast and I'm going to just do it. And see what happens. You see, you know, you know like, uh, I'll give you this example. Who here has had colonoscopy? Okay? When you have colonoscopy, how many days before should you stop eating? Day. Two days, 48 Two days. hours, 24 to 48 hours you stop eating. So if you don't die when you do colonoscopy, <laughs> then what's going to make you die if you do fasting? Right? Okay? So, no, there's nobody here. Okay, so think about that. So sometimes when you go for medical tests, they tell you to stop eating for 24 hours. You don't die. So don't be so scared. Just try it. It's not going to kill you, okay? How about coconut water? Have coconut water? Uh, depends. You got to look at the ingredients. If it's freshly made and you make it at home yourself, then drink coconut water. But when you look at the ingredients and there's sugar and lactose and, and all this, uh, all this stuff, and it, don't eat it. So I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, no, you can make coconut. Yeah, you can make it. You just drag it. So we're gonna call it a night, and I'm gonna stay around. If anybody has questions, I'm gonna answer because I know some of you I see you wanna go. So thank you for your time. So don't forget, if you have Facebook, you go to your Facebook and you like my page.